Speaker, provide them with core funding. Thank you. And resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Vancouver East. Mr. Speaker, when I rose in September to ask the Prime Minister for a national childcare program for all, I received a non-answer about the money they are investing in certain provinces. Whenever pressure on the lack of action, this government immediately falls back on the Canada Child Benefit Policy introduced three years ago. Well, Mr. Speaker, that just doesn't cut it. Families are struggling to access affordable, quality childcare. In 2017, the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives estimated that 776,000 Canadian children live in communities where at least three children are competing for one spot in a licensed daycare. Assuming that they get a spot, parents then have the rough decision of paying ridiculous childcare amounts, costs at least $1,000 a month per child, or leaving work to care for their kids. In fact, the most expensive cities include Toronto at $1,375 a month, Vancouver at $1,325 a month, and Richmond at $1,210 in uh, $1,210 a month versus Montreal's fees where there's universal child care at $164 per month. Single parents are hit the hardest, spending on average 33% of their income on child care according to the 2016 OECD study. Women are disproportionately affected and are often forced to become a stay-at-home mom because they cannot afford child care. It is shocking that in 2018, with the so-called feminist prime minister, child care continues to act as a barrier to women in the workplace and directly contributes to the gender wage gap that exists in Canada. Liberal inaction is a clear indication that the government either does not care or are out of touch with the pressing issues parents of young children are faced with. Instead, the Liberal government plays Santa Claus to the rich corporations and Scrooge to everyday Canadians struggling to make ends meet. The fall fiscal update gave a blanket tax break to the richest corporations in Canada, allowing them to write off the costs of private jets and limousines. Yet there was nothing in this economic update on childcare. If the government can afford $14 billion in tax giveaways for the wealthiest, why can't they invest in childcare? The Liberals should note that it is not only families and communities that are affected, but businesses who lose good, hardworking employees are impacted as well. UBC's Dr. Paul Kershaw said, work-life conflicts of parents raising young children cost Canadian businesses an estimated $4 billion. Through the media, the head of Bank of Canada indicated that Quebec's universal childcare program may well be the tool to boost the entire Canadian economy. According to the media reports, the Bank of Canada credited Quebec's $10 a day childcare program for raising prime age female workforce participation from 74% to 84% 20 years ago. Mr. Polas stated, if we could simply bring the particip participation rate of prime age women in the rest of Canada up to the level in Quebec, we could add almost 300,000 people to our country's workforce. This is no question that we should be invest there is no question that we should be investing in childcare, investing in people, and for the government of Canada to act now, Mr. Speaker. Prior to the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for Vancouver East for, for requesting us adjournment debate on child care. Uh, my colleague states that it's essential for working mothers to have access to high-quality, accessible and affordable child care services. Families need this, and I completely, and our government completely agrees with her. The affordability and quality of child care services influence parents' participation in the labour market and child, and child development. And I'm sure that my colleague is fully aware of the investments that we're making in early learning and child care services. But if she needs to be reminded, I'll reiterate them to her. We intend to create up to 40,000 new subsidized childcare spaces across the country by March 2020 and to assist low and modest income families with the rising cost of educating their children. To do this, we entered into bilateral agreements with the provinces and territories following the multilateral early learning and child care framework. This framework sets the foundation for governments to work toward a shared, long-term vision where all children benefit from quality early learning and child care services. The agreements contain action plans that identify priority areas for investments for each province and territory. My colleague will be pleased to learn that these action plans are paying off and are helping parents find a balance between work and family. 
For example, in British Columbia, a greater number of young parents can now obtain a free, free childcare services while they complete their studies. In addition, the province is using the funding received through the Canada-British Columbia Bilateral Agreement to expand its programs throughout the province. One such example is the Aboriginal Head Start program, which provides prevention, tightening of family bonds, and early learning and childcare services adapted to Indigenous cultures. In Alberta, it's military families that benefit. Edmonton and Cold Lake now have more affordable childcare options. They have access to $25 childcare spaces on two Canadian Forces bases. These are just some of the examples that provide concrete evidence of our measures that we're taking in collaboration with the provinces and territories to give parents access to affordable, flexible and high quality childcare services. Furthermore, on September 17th, the Indigenous Early Learning and Child Care Framework was released in partnership with the Assembly of First Nations, Inuit, Tupperit Kanatami and the Métis National Councils. This framework reflects the unique cultures, aspirations and needs of First Nations, Inuit and Métis children and families across Canada. Mr. Speaker, the investments we're making are part of our commitment to help the middle class and those that are working hard to join it. $7.5 billion over 10 years, bilaterals signed and secured with provinces and territories. On top of that, the investments in the Inuit and, and, and Métis and, and First Nations communities. And we're not done there yet. We also have just included in the last fall financial update uh, the notion of social innovation and the role that social innovation and housing need to play together and have made eligible through the Canada Mortgage Housing Corporations the blending of these programs so that new public housing can also have new public daycare spaces built on site to accommodate the complex needs of lower income Canadians. This government is committed to childcare, committed to children, committed to families and had not just spoken about it in this house, we've invested those dollars now and into the future to benefit all Canadians right across Canada from coast to coast to coast for Vancouver East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All of that does not add up to a national affordable child care program. In fact, a few weeks ago, I was with the uh, Premier, Premier Horgan, Minister Katrina Conroy, and Minister Katrina Chan that announced BC will begin with 50 $10 a day prototype child care centers. Now, I was thrilled that Frog Hollow in Vancouver East was chosen as one of the sites. One of the parents remarked that she can now afford to have another child. In Quebec, affordable child care has helped 70,000 mothers join the workforce, boosting the economy by $1.75 for every dollar invested by government. So for the for the parliamentary secretary to say that they're doing all that they can. Let me just say this. The program is not a national affordable child care program. That's what Canadians need. BC is trying to do their best, but it's not enough. The investment from the government is not enough. They would love for the government to invest in a national affordable housing program and a national affordable child care program for British Columbians. That would make a real difference for real people across this country. Parliamentary Secretary. Well, I'm pre pleased to announce that the federal government has signed a bilateral agreement with a 